Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the fourth dimension. What is the fourth dimension? Well, in order to help us understand what it is, let's go back what Einstein predicted and actually proved. He predicted that time would slow down in a strong gravitational field. In other words, when you place a large object like the Earth in space, space around it tends to change. It tends to bend or warp into the fourth spatial dimension. And that causes time to actually run slower. In other words, if you're on the surface of the Earth, as opposed to somewhere in space, time actually slows down relative to the time in space. He also predicted that light would bend. Light is affected by gravity, which of course nobody believed, but he actually proved. And he proved that when light goes by an object, such as a, the sun, for example, which has a large mass, light would actually change direction. It would be changed by the gravitational force caused by the sun. Now that's kind of mysterious because light doesn't have any mass and how can it be affected by gravity? Well that's because a large mass placed in space actually changes space around it which causes light to follow that change or that bend in space. He proved that in 1919 and became world famous because of that. From all these studies and these predictions out came an equation that was actually able to calculate how much time changes. This is called the time dilation equation. And here are the variables that we use in the equation. When we use that equation to predict what the time change would be on the surface of the Earth, on the surface of the Sun, on the surface of white dwarf, on the surface of neutron star, and on the surface of black hole, we get some very interesting results. First of all, when we look at the surface of the Earth relative to being out in space when there's no gravity at all, the change is very minute. It's only seven ten billions of a second for every second that passes. So even though time does run slower on the surface of the Earth, it's not by a lot. When we get to the Sun, it becomes a little bit more significant. It turns out that in the duration of the Sun's existence and the Earth's existence, because the Earth and the Sun were formed about 4.6 billion years ago, since that time, 9,784 hours, hours less time has passed on the Sun than on the Earth because the gravitational force on the surface of the Sun is stronger than the gravitational force on the surface of the Earth. When we go to a white dwarf on the surface of a white dwarf, and after all a white dwarf is the remnant of a dying star where the massive core of a star is collapsed into a volume no bigger than the Earth, the gravitational forces are so enormous on the surface of a white dwarf that time will slow down significantly. It will slow down a half a minute for every day. When we go to a neutron star, which is even a more dense star, the remnant of a supermassive star after it explodes in a supernova explosion, the density is so high and the gravitational forces on the surface are so enormous that time has slowed down significantly, about six hours for every day. In other words, if 24 hours pass in space, only 18 hours will pass on the surface of a neutron star. And finally, when you get close to a black hole, when you finally reach the event horizon, that is where the gravitational force is so enormous that not even light can escape. At that point, the escape velocity equals the speed of light. Then time will actually stand still. Something happens to space when you put a very dense object in space. Space warps to such an extent that time will actually slow down to the point where it no longer moves forward. If you want to live forever, set up camp right at the event horizon, of course. That would be rather difficult because there's an enormous gravitational pull that will certainly pull you in and you probably will never be seen again after that. But for a very small period of time, you will have experienced what it means for time to stand still in the fourth dimension.